Every time. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. But who can relate, though? Vistaril, Hydroxazine, Boost Bar, SSRIs, known as Prozac, Ceritaline, you name it. We're going to be discussing in this video, this brief video, why sometimes these are first lines against things such as anxiety, unless it's anxiety that can't be dealt with, why this would be a first line instead of going directly to a benzo. All right, let's jump right on into this video. You know what to do, like and subscribe. All right, now let's get right into the business. Why would you start with Boost Bar, Hydroxazine, Vistaril, things like this first instead of things such as benzos? Meaning, let's say somebody comes and sees a psychiatrist and like, man, my anxiety's been high, you know, for the past couple months. You know, I, and let's say they have no history of trying anything for anxiety. Things a lot of times such as Vistaril or even Boost Bar, which a lot of times things such as Boost Bar, Boost Barone are taken on a schedule, Boost Bar is. So like typically a lot of times like what I've seen with patients in the inpatient setting is more so it'd be like you take it at eight in the morning, then you take it mid afternoon and then at night or sometimes just morning and night. Doses vary typically anywhere from 2.5 milligrams to about 15 per dose. The average dose I typically see is 7.5 uh, for, for someone. Uh, but anyway, with this, why I actually do think why you should start with something like this and then you have hydroxazine or Vistaril as an as-needed medication in the inpatient setting. It's something that'd be every four hours as needed, but that doesn't mean you'd give it every four out. You'd give it every four hours. It just means if if the anxiety is high enough, you'd use it every. You can use it up to every four hours. However, a lot of times I will say with that, if you are using it every four hours and it's not helping that's when you would move to another medication sometimes even like a 0 0.5 milligram clonazepam or clonopin would be a good option as an as needed medication now if the anxiety is really bad you typically you would use a benzo like and you'd start with either 0.25 or 0.5 of a clonopin depending on body weight and whatnot twice a day this would be if it was really bad and you and it's anxiety attacks just chronic ones that you can't get through at all um, that would typically be the route you'd go but a lot of times what patients report is why even like you know I've tried it before in the past they keep prescribing it to me I want I need something else and what I typically tell patients is have you actually really given it a chance because a lot of times if you ask them They'll say, oh, I don't like it, but they've only tried it a couple times. And maybe the first couple times they took it, you know, they took it a little too late with the, uh, not going to say anxiety attack, because that's not something you would really use for an anxiety attack. But really what I'm getting at with that is, how were they really taking it? Did they have a bad, did they have a couple side effects? And I'm not saying the side effects shouldn't be accounted for, because people are allergic to it. That is true. But a lot of times when you look at some of the other factors in regards to how they were using Vistaril or Hydroxazine or even Boost Bar, if they weren't taking it as scheduled or whatnot, that would be, that would be when before typically they move on to the next, you know, medication or like a benzo or whatnot, they would want them to try to take it as directed in that way, meaning... If you need to take it, once again, if you need to take it a couple times a day, the boost bar, I mean, scheduled twice a day for boost bar, you need to start doing that. And for example, if they say, oh, I don't like Vistaril, like that's typically the, fir like the first thing you would use. They would typically next go, let's go boost bar and let's schedule it and keep it, you know, you keep it in your system to see how it's helping out. So really, premise is first medication a lot of times doctors will go with for people suffering from anxiety is hydroxazine or Vistaril. There, it's typically, there is a, there is a, it's not a, it's a capsule, not really extended release, a capsule form and just a generic pill form, but typically the dose would be 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams as needed. That's what they would first start with. Next would be something such as Boost Bar scheduled with something, even sometimes like an antidepressant, because antidepressants, a lot of times in combined with something like this can be the game changer. Sometimes 
um, an SSRI and S or an SNRI combined with something such as Vistaril or Boost Bar is what you needed because you're making sure you're you know you're balancing your serotonin, your norepinephrine, and also helping with the anxiety. Now the mechanism now the mechanism of action for things such as Vistaril in particular particular they do have antihistamine effects. So if you are allergic to Benadryl, I would highly advise to tell tell your doctor this if you are. Because that would be one contraindication typically of it. But that's typically how they go. Vistaril, then Boost Bar with, once again, an SSRI a lot of times. And then if that's not doing it, they would probably keep you on the SSRI. And then from there, they would probably add something such as an as-needed 0.5 Ativan at most once or twice a day. Or even a clonazepam 0.5 milligrams once a day. And I've found a lot of times that what patients have reported to me is that clonazepam or clonopin works a lot better than lorazepam or also known as ativan. They're both benzos, but a lot of times as, as it's described, clonopin feels a little bit cleaner. And what they mean by that is I, I think they mean there's not much of a come down. It's more of an even, it lasts longer for them and it's an even, it's more of an even, you know, relief. Um, and there's not really a crash or anything with it. Well, our rebound anxiety a lot of times but once again if you do start something like this always 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 consult with your doctor a taper plan always do and let's say you're toward the end of your script and you can't get a refill in a while or whatnot what you need to do with the remaining script depending on how long it is you have to make sure you're tapering it and even just getting a little bit of that medication in of that benzo until you can get your next script meaning if you have to break them into force even can make the difference in regards to potentially having seizures or not. But that's this video, kind of, if you are suffering from anxiety, and once again, all doctors are different, the severity of it, et cetera, et cetera. But this would typically, this is one of the primary ways in which anxiety medications are prescribed uh, in, the Amer in, in the American system, at least. Like and subscribe, that is your daily dose of mental health. Love you all. Leave a comment if you want. Peace and love.